Welcome to Still Plays Galaxy of Heroes. This is the weekly talk. This week's topics are as follows. We're going to quickly touch upon the past two Galactic Challenges. We're going to move on to the announcement of Galactic Legend Luke and Palpatine. Then move on to the Admiral Piet release and some of my initial thoughts. And then login character for the month of September. And wrapping up as we always do with my own gearing and farming. Uh, before we move on, though, I do want to address last week I didn't have any videos. I had some computer issues. I had to reformat, reinstall everything, uh, rebuild a lot of my settings, I believe. Um, if you saw my Grand Arena video from yesterday, I didn't catch that my computer mic was on and picking up audio. So there was some double audio competing. So I apologize for that. But I think now the system is either reset up or we're 90 percent there but if things are still off let me know in a comment down below so i'm going to make most of this video pretty quick i want to just do a couple rapid fire videos to kind of get back into the smooth thing to make up for last week uh, this video i'm about to hit play on is from my bounty hunter team on the galactic legends we're going to be showing tier seven here and this playback is going to be accelerated. I have a six star Mando. I believe at the time I recorded this video, it was a seven star cargo, but Mando and Karga have the Zetas and, uh, and our gear 11, the others are gear 12. But what I did like about this event was you could beat tier seven with the bounty hunters at the level I have them at. It was very RNG dependent. I would say about 20% of the time I was able to beat it. But it was fun to be able to accomplish an event again with low gear, even though there was nothing to show for it. Uh, it would have been nice if I was able to get some gear for that accomplishment, but uh, that's not how CG is currently playing things. Hopefully, uh, however they plan this long-term future, there will be a reward for being able to accomplish something like this. Uh, the new Galactic Challenge with the Old Republic, I'm not enjoying as much. There's not as much testing that can be accomplished. Uh, I really don't like the power level between tier 4 and tier 5 especially. I've talked about this in previous videos, but you can't really get any testing done. They don't have all the Zetas at tier 4. You can't tell where the mods are. You don't know what relic level they are at tier 5. So basically tier 4 is too weak to get any testing done. Tier 5 is too powerful to get any testing done for some of these non-traditional teams that I really want to be testing out, especially these new releases that I want to be testing out that I'm not going to be having relic for a long time and at best are going to be at gear 11, gear 12. But this Galactic Challenge is what CG is giving us for being able to do any testing. Okay, so Galactic Legends. I want to key on this line here in the post. The requirements for both these characters will be released periodically like before, but within a shorter time frame. So I was trying to break this down. There's a good chance Galactic Legends are going to be released, or these new Galactic Legends will be released at the end of September to wrap up the financial quarter. That's usually how CG times things. I was trying to figure out where the release releases were happening for the original Galactic Legends and here is what I was looking at with this post here from January 29th where they're announcing the Galactic Legends format this was before they had announced what the requirements were for Galactic Legend Ray and Kylo that event happened at the end of March so there was a three month roughly it, two month three month timeline for those characters being released we already have the first set of requirements for galactic legend uh jedi master luke and whatever they call the, they're calling this palpatine one so 
that's that tell, that's telling me they want these out before the end of the quarter to get that huge influx of money uh, so their bosses don't get upset with the lack of revenues. I'm surprised these characters have gotten released so quickly. Uh, I don't really care. Like when it comes to these characters that as a free-to-play person it's so far out in my future it doesn't really affect how I play. Um, I didn't Here's how I feel about it. These requirements are much better, at least initially, than they were for Rey and Kylo. I don't hate relicking any of these characters like the Rey and Kylo ones. So if I were pursuing a Galactic Legend character, I would definitely be going for these guys if I'm not too far along on the requirements for Rey and Kylo. I'm personally still going after Jedi Master Luke, then I'm going to go after one of these. I'm probably going to wait until more of the requirements are released before I make a definitive decision on who I'm going for. One positive thing is by releasing these these new characters and having this new amount of relics required characters, it's going to be a lot easier now to go after a Galactic Legend without it killing your Grand Arena. Just because the people who already have Rey or Kylo or who have already made progress towards Rey and Kylo, they're going to be further ahead of you in the top 80 GP. So it's the matchups won't be as, um, as off balanced as they have been, which has really deterred me from going after either of them, either Rey or Kylo. So let's talk about Admiral Piet. I think this weekend I'll do a more in-depth breakdown like I have done with the past couple marquees with Mon Mothma and Three Baka. But today I want to just get some quick thoughts out. I like the release of the character. I like what he's doing for the Empire. The big thing that I was noticing and trying to test was with his unique Zeta here with the stacks he gets of the, em the Emperor's Trap. So what he's doing here is when his allies are attacking out of turn, you're getting more of these traps happening and stacking more. What I'll show in this footage here, what I was trying to test out was that I think that is going to mean that Gar Saxon and Rain's Trooper could potentially be interesting working with him since they're the characters who are adding a lot of out of turn assists and you can if you pause in some of these videos you'll see how many stacks of the emperor's traps that i'm getting before it resets i'm not completely up to speed on how that resets at this moment but then that's part of the reason this weekend i think i'm going to break down this character a little bit more like i have been that's something I have not done yet. But that Zeta, I think, is the first Zeta I'm going to go for over the Zeta that increases cooldowns and helps with that marked ability. That ability, the suborbitable strike, to me, that Zeta seems like it can be held off on. The one thing, though, is with these characters, or with this character, He's pretty weak so far at three stars, so I definitely think I'm going to use my crystal stockpile later in the video during my own uh, gear project section to buy some packs. Not buy, but use my crystals on packs uh, and take them up to at least four stars like I've done in the last two releases. Uh, but he definitely seems like uh, he's not going to be viable till later. So until I have him geared up to like gear 11, I'm not going to bother putting those Zetas on because I don't think the benefit is going to be there. So let's wrap up with, no, let's hit our final main topic with the login character for September, IG-88. I hope that means IG-11. 
I would love more Mando characters. It would suggest to me that a legendary is even more possible for the Mandalorian characters if they release another character. Uh, there has been a lot of marquee releases in the past several months and that usually means when they're trying to really stretch our resources distract us with a bunch of different things that they're going to release some sort of legendary or epic confrontation or uh, other characters i forget the other event that jtr and luke were uh, for instance but when there are these back-to-back-to-back-to-back to back to back to back releases, that usually means there's some they're going to be needed for something, especially when they're themed. So I'm hoping IG-88 means we're getting IG-11. Last month with Stormtrooper Han, I took that to mean uh, they were announcing the Galactic Challenges with the Death Star, which was a pretty big disappointment i was hoping that when they were showcasing the death star and saying here comes the death star it was going to mean something more than what we got which was the same art the same setting the same everything that was pretty disappointing uh hopefully this month coming coming is going to be a lot better news so we're going to now switch into my own gearing and farming. We're going to start with packs for Admiral Piet. Oh, before we move on, I do want to say double drops. There's a lot. I, I repeat this all the time. There, there's a lot of cynicism about double drops that you will see on the forums, on Reddit, wherever. Ignore all that. Take advantage. Get your gearing done, not your, get your farming done. That should be your number one priority as a free-to-play player. I'm a long-time free-to-play player, but still as a free-to-play player, I am done with all of the old farms. I made those my priority before anything else. That's where my crystals go is to just refreshing those nodes uh, and just doing those cheap refreshes and really try and accelerate all of those farms and I have never wasted a double drop event and if you go back into some of my videos you can see how quickly I got done with the resistance heroes Poe and Finn was those matched up nicely with the May double drops I hit them hard and I finished off those characters uh, very quickly uh, over the course of a couple days was able to hit those nodes hard and make a lot of progress. Now let's get back on track. We are going to use crystals on these packs. We've got 26.7. It's been taking me around seven to 9,000 crystals to, uh, to get a character up to four stars. Hopefully we get a little bit luckier. Seven's better than the fives though. The sevens means, that's nice. Seven means we, this will be a cheaper investment. Okay, we're gonna buy one more. Okay, that was cheaper than either Three Baka or Mon Mothma, so that, that makes me happy. That's also really, I mean, it's not the best use of crystals. I could wait a month and just, it would have taken me, I mean, that took me 5,000 crystals to get him up to four stars. If I would have waited a month and just done it through shipments, that would have, it would have taken 3,200 or so. So not the best use of crystals, but it allows me to try things out a little bit earlier. You can see Cardoon, I am wrapping up shortly, I think before the double drops that are going to happen on, on the light side and dark side nodes, I'm going to be done with Cardoon. 
but I still have the Thai Bomber and Y-Wing that I am currently farming up. Y-Wing should be done by the end of September. Thai Bomber, we'll see where that one gets. I'm probably not going to refresh the node two times with the ships like I have been with the characters. And you, let me show you uh, Mando. 25 out of, out of 100, he'll be done by sometime in September, and those double drops are going to definitely help speed that one up. So we're working on Jedi Knight Luke. I am going to bring up Wedge to get make sure his ship is usable to gear 11. Before I pop that gear on, the highlighted row at the top, that's where my current gear counts are for some of this more in-demand gear. And then right below is Jedi Knight Luke, where my characters are at, and uh, what is needed to get characters up to gear 11. And you can see Wedge is cheap. Uh, and then Captain Han after that is probably going to be the next one. Rolo uses a lot of carbs, and I can't afford to bring her up yet, but hopefully I'll get there before the release of the event. I don't think it's going to be, happen, though, from the data mines. It sounds like that event could be coming back very soon. So we're going to take him up. Nothing too big here. All right. And 11 should be good to beat the event with, so he's not going higher than that. And he's not getting any of this gear. And now he is demoted off of the favorites. Now, for Grand Arena, I want to make a lot of improvements. I want to get some better matchups going. The footage that has been going out there is becoming less and less useful and just it's not challenging enough to be fun so vader i want to do malik i want to do but i don't really have enough kairos to do both i believe i have 200 vader i kind of would rather do though than malik because malik is already paired up uh, with relic bastila and darth revan and he's already really good at gear 12 that I'm not too concerned. Uh, so I actually think, even though I'm a little further away, and he uses a carb, I'm taking up Vader to Relics. So that's the Mark V. I think, yeah, we got a bunch of those. And that's not a big deal. Okay. And I'll be taking him up to, I don't know, we'll do Relic 3 for now because I think that's what we need for the event. I have nothing left to farm on Cantina nodes, so I've just been farming the energies waiting to, uh, for when I get characters uh, ready to be relicked, and then kind of strategically from there deciding how far I want to take them up. One of the, th we'll take a little detour right now. One of the things that I have done is with like my arena team, I haven't taken them past Relic 2 for Echo and Rex because I can climb into the top 50 every day. And until Shakti is relict and I can start working on Kiati Mundi shards, which I do want to do, there's no point in bringing them up higher in relics it's when I'm already getting as high as I'm going to get uh, in my squad arena. Really, I just want to do things as optimized as possible, and that's where they're at. Uh, I am bringing Obi-Wan up. Now I'm glad there's a reason to take him up to relics, but there's one really dumb reason why he's going to gear 12, 
and you see that just happened there where I got my little notification. Quest complete! <laughs> so dumb. All right, back to gearing. We can take Obi-Wan out now. And then I'm very close, as I recall, with Chewie as well. Yeah, he just needs one piece. And it's another stun gun. We're going to just take Chewie to relics. And I will do, I'll bring him up to like relic two later. We'll wrap up with Captain Han. We're starting to get low on carbs, so I don't, I'm not going to bring him up to gear 11. We'll, but I want to make some progress on him and he's going to be favorited for next time. So let's see what I, how far I feel comfortable taking him. And it looks like he's going to need another 100 carbs. Yeah, we're leaving it there. We're, I don't want to go too low on my carb stockpile. We should still be fine on stun guns. Yeah, we used 150 stun guns. That's fine. So that's where we're calling it for now. Glad to be back. This has been Still Plays Galaxy of Heroes. Thank you for watching. Be safe out there, everyone, and be excellent to each other. This coming week, I will hopefully get a number of videos out to make up for being off last week. Thank you again.